Deep heat. Oh, they've clipped. Off, off. How he held on to that, I don't know. This is the biggest crash in RGL history. And he's out of control into the wall. Brace yourselves, this is going to be action packed. Hi and welcome to the RGL Forza Championships for 2013 and it is round 8 of the development series and this one promises to be very interesting as we bring out something almost the equivalent of the V8 supercar and yes that's right it's the Ford Fusion number 5 NASCAR and from 2011 and it is R3 up to 800 so this is more powerful than what will be seen in the V8 supercars but that's going to happen with this series now as we get to the top end of the cars next will be R2 and then R1 to finish off this series so 729 was the original PI so a bit of room for drivers to play around with here and generally uh, people found it not too bad to work with again some similarities with the V8 supercar making it just that bit easier and keeping the aspiration uh, stock with the car as it as it comes and also maintaining a rear wheel drive drivetrain and let's take a look at the circuit and it is the Infineon Raceway NASCAR circuit to pair up the vehicle with the track with 3.2 kilometers again the very tight narrow sort of track with turns that aren't as distinct as what you get at the likes of Circuit de Catalunya or the Nürburgring Grand Prix Circuit Hockenheim things like that so a bit of a different layout and again it's one of those ones where you either love it or hate it and some of the drivers in the field definitely don't like this track and looking into the practice times I think it was Catters that was really setting the pace and as we'll find out here in qualifying, he was yet again plagued with uh, issues ahead of the at the end of qualifying, which meant he had to start from the back of the grid because we have Brettley there in, in pole with Twisty not too far behind for time. Then we jump into the 112s with Ninja Gundam, so HD Motorsport lock out the second row. Jake Mo keeping up with his late season speed. High boy qualifying not too badly there, and Elsimo ran out the top eight, and we have a APRT Queensland team locking out row five, and we find Pistol and Scavenger ran it out, and you can see with the times there, Catters obviously up in the top three, but relegated to last. So let's see whether he can storm through the field, and now we have three lights on. And they're out, they go. You're watching, getting off to a pretty good start. And all getting around the corner. Oh, someone's just gone wide. A couple of drivers wide into the dirt. Oh, one car off the track. Another one out the background. And it looks like you're watching, go for an evasive move. They're very tricky going into that turn to the right hand side. So I believe that was the. Jake Mo that went off as well as one of the APRT drivers can't tell which one at the moment so everything happening in the first couple of corners didn't seem to be too big a contact though so I don't think there was uh, any significant damage and right now we're on high on with high boy there followed by you watching and Cat is already making a jump by the look of that he's sporting a few of the cars actually in the black and yellow so it might get a little bit difficult but we'll do our best to tell you who's who and where they're at now that is Ninja currently in third and Recoil putting the pressure on I believe that was Gundam who's gone in the pit lane I don't know what he's doing that's outside of the pit window I think he's just looking for that early jump and he's made a bit of a mistake so that's going to cost him dearly he will need to pit again or he will get penalised at the end of the race. Uh, Brettley there with the fastest lap so far, 116.829, so very quick. 
And generally no one really separating themselves other than Brett. They're just getting a couple of car lengths on Twisty. Ninja sticking close by in the third at the moment. And you can see them coming over that hill. It's uh, crazy. Back wheel is flying out. And on board right now with Ninja in third place. And we can see Twisty just making a bit of a gain on Brettley. We've got 13 laps. And this won't take too long with the uh, pace that these guys are getting. Twisty just locking it up a little bit. Pushing the car to its limits. Going around that corner. And now they head into the final, almost the final turn, which is the hairpin. Got a slight kink to the left before you... Uh, Across the finish line, and now Brettley really ranging up on. Uh, sorry, Twisty ranging up on the back of Brettley, I should say. And Ninja finds himself in a nice little gap at the moment. So losing a bit of ground to these front two guys. They are the the quickest guys in the field. Oh, Twisty just a little bit uh, tight there on the left hand. Uh, sends a witch's hat flying, and you can tell there. No surprise, he had the fastest lap. He's He's probably gained at least a one and a half car lengths on Brettley. Brettley sliding out around that corner. It's a great shot that. Now how many cars we're going to see do that over the course of this race? And we'll just have a look at a few replays. So this is a start on board with Ninja. So there's Jake Moe. And a very good reaction from your watching and recoil by the look of it not to get collected by Jake Moe as he bounces off the tyre barrier and Jake Moe's probably wondering how the hell he got across there without getting tagged now we're on board with Scavenger who was in position 8 at the time of this incident where he's just gone off and and he's hit a bog spot and gone to the last position so very disappointing that and ooh, big dive by this is Cat is on board with you watching I think he's going to make the pass so remembering he was one of the fastest drivers in the field just touching the wall and his charge up the field is looking good at the moment already catching you watching and now making the pass and he has the fastest lap of the race to go with that as well so sporting slightly different colors this round a lot of the drivers opt in to try and go with the more traditional NASCAR livery. And Catters is one of those ditching the traditional SDR livery. So looking at the leaderboards there, no change to the front three runners. High boy gaining a couple of spots. Catters gaining seven. That'll be due to a couple of pit stops and just pure speed that he's got at the moment with his Ford Fusion race car. And there you can see Alcimo Recoil and Jake Moe. Those were the three that would have been ahead of Catters that have allowed him to jump up a few extra spots. Meanwhile, Pistol Fitz back in the last position. Gundam, he has pitted, but we can't mark that down as a pit because he does need to do that once again. So he's just about killed his race then and there. Now we've got Jake Moe all over the back of Recoil. High boy now with the fastest lap time. I don't think we've seen his name pop up on that graphic at all this season. So well done to High Boy managed to get a very good pace there. So if you can maintain that, we could have a very interesting end to this DVS race. And right now it looks like there's a few battles just breaking out. We've got, as mentioned, Jake Mo all over the back of Recoil. Alcimo not too far behind them. As they pass finish line, we're getting close to the halfway mark. And just on board now is Recoil. Jake Mo, oh, way off onto the dirt. Yeah, he rescued that very well. Big, huge moment. Could have found himself into the wall and spinning around. That would have cost him dearly, but he's managed to hold on. And he hasn't really lost that much ground because of it, which is a pretty good effort. There you go, you can see, not too far behind recoil. So he managed to keep the speed up without losing total control of the car. So well done, good driving. 
and Brentley now hitting the fastest lap of the race so going hammer and tong at each other trying to get the speed out of these cars and into the large hairpin as they complete their lap 5 they'll be on lap 6 now as they cross the finish line and it's got a lot of got to hold your nerve very well going through that first turn because it is flat out that left hander and if you overdo it you shoot off into the grass but if you can just nail it with really good speed it is a excellent feeling and now we've got recall over the back of Alsimo so that was actually pistol fit earlier behind these two not Alsimo, Alsimo is ahead of them and now he's must be having one of his worst laps at the moment because they've caught him very quickly that is pistol fit you can see way back in the background there now Recall's managed to get a bit of a jump on Jake Mo, and that's probably a good thing because if he wants to try and battle it out with Elsimo, he doesn't want to lose too much ground. He can get past him. Oh, he's gone in for the dive. Elsimo going very wide, and that's allowed Jake Mo through as well. So, not sure whether Elsimo was just conceding defeat or he just stuffed up his entry into that hairpin but that's given those two guys a very easy pass and now we're aboard with the front row we've just heard that three of the front drivers are unable to finish the race that is Brettley, Twisty and Highboy the other three fastest drivers are out of the race unfortunate unfortunately for them but this really throws a cat amongst the pigeons when it comes to the championship standings not necessarily for Twisty he's pretty well protected he'd have to have two more DNFs really to uh, lose this series but this puts these two guys as potential one and two although Jake Mo and Recall may factor but at the moment these guys are the fastest which is FCR Ninja and Catters and Catters all over the back of Ninja looking for a pass into turn seven and he can't find his way through but he might get him under the undercut here around the outside he's got it he had the momentum coming out of there ninja went in a bit too deep and that has seen catters move up a position and not oh there's ninja just going a little bit wide so they're not running in first position just yet And FCR Ninja now peels off into pit lane. Catters moves on through. And whether or not he opts to pit in the very next lap, we're not too sure yet. And now we're back in this battle pack with Recall, who's lost a position to Jake Moser. Somewhere there, I think Recall went off on the turn that goes into the hairpin, just went a bit wide and managed to stop his car from hitting the wall. But that allowed Jake Mo a nice easy pass, but now Recoil is returning the pressure. And it's Jake Mo's turn to hold his nerve. So look at that leaderboard now. Catters has gone into the lead. Queensland Rum Runner and Scavenger yet to pit as well have made, made some significant places, but they will drop back a few once they have pitted. Gundam still in position 6, he still needs to pit which will probably put him back to almost last position and now that is Catters into pit lane so we'll get a look at that and see how close Ninja and Catters are to each other at the end of that and there you can see Brettley and Twisty and Highboy, all three of them DNFs out of the race Pistol Fit coming in last position with Gohard between him and his teammate for Nerd Motorsport in Alsimo. Ooh, recall, big cut there through that corner. And now let's just take a look at this. That is Catter's exiting pit lane on your top left hand screen. Ninja coming around to approach the pit lane straight. 
And it looks as though Catters is only, he's got it just, ooh, almost crosses the blend line. Wouldn't want to lose points because of that, but there's your gap, it's not too much. By the time Catters managed to get around the right-hander, Ninja with the warmer tyres has managed to catch up a bit. And there are three laps remaining. Can Ninja regain that position that Catters got off him, or will Catters? be able to hold on for a win I think they're a bit too far ahead these two of most of the other guys you might actually find that you're watching is next best placed out of these ones and you can just see there in the background you're watching so he's currently once the other two pit third followed by Jake Moe and Recoil And now we go back to them as we speak. Here, here it is, Recall. All over the back of Jake Moe. The Taztec NASCAR. Oh, and he's gone very deep. And Recall's probably followed him a little bit and wasn't able to make the most out of that. He's gained a little bit more room on him, but that was would have been a perfect opportunity to make the pass. But again, Recall just a little bit deep under brakes himself. Oh, on the side by side. He's throwing everything at the dude 67 race shop driver. Heading over the hill. Got to maintain some control and they do. Playing a little bit safe. Heading into turn 6. And Recall's got that car well under control as he pinpoints that where he wants it to go on the track at the moment. And all the pressure is on Jake Moe. Back in at to the front now and Catter's got just a little bit of a gap or he's maintained the gap from when he left pit lane. Still two laps to go. And Catter's just a little bit deep under brakes. And look at that ninja just catching a little bit, but it's, it is interesting. Some very different approaches to that hairpin. Now two laps remaining. And it will be interesting to see just where people end up at the end of this race. The main one that's probably going to suffer the most is Fear Bretley in second. He was a little bit off twisty. Uh, and he was vulnerable to a few of the other drivers in the field. And by getting no points at all, even worse. Now we've got Ninja all over the back of Caddis. So Caddis had a few poor moments in that first sector. Ninja looking to push past. Just losing it out a little bit. We've got some great battles here. Got Ninja for HD Motorsport up against Screwdriver Racing, defending champion X Catters, and then also we have Recall for Taztec Motorsport battling out with Jamie. Oh, a bit of contact, a little bit of a tap from Ninja. That's unsettled Catters a little bit, but he's managed to hold on. And he's keeping the HD Motorsport driver at bay. One more lap to go. Ninja, he's just been absolutely relentless on the back of Catter's car. Can the defending champion keep his cool? Oh, he's gone a little bit deep there. Ninja on the up on the side, and he's also lost a bit of traction out of that turn. And he couldn't keep the momentum. This is an intense battle. Catter's just a little bit slippery out of there. Ninja looking for some room into turn six. Squeezes Catters. Catters had to go wide. Ninja looking for a pass now at turn seven. And he's up on the inside, but he's going to go deep. Oh, a bit of contact. They've both gone wide. Ninja is in the lead. He's managed to get the lead off of Catters on the last lap. Catters now, he's not going to take it in out. He's going to try and get that place back. He's worked his way from almost last position to to a potential victory. Granted, three of our drivers, the front of the field did drop out, but nonetheless, that is racing now into the final chance for a pass here at the Hepin. Catters on the outside. Ninja's managed to stay on the... Oh, no! Into the wall. There's a collision. You're watching. It's not far behind. If they don't get out of there, goes you're watching. 
contact. You're watching into the wall. He's rescued it. Catters out of there. And there goes Recoil and Jake Moe. Catters, the potential first, then a second. Now he has crossed the line in fifth. You watch him has won the race. A bit of a Stephen Bradbury moment there, but he would take it. His first win of the season and his second podium in this series. Congratulations. Wow. What a finish. A lot of things have happened there. We're going to show a few replays before we get to the uh, final race results. So this is Al Samo also on the last lap as all that action was unfolding. He's lost control of the car into the wall rolling it huge collision with the wall and that has dropped him back about three spots by the time he gets back on the track here we go so there's catters and you're watching he he had the momentum out of that corner and catters in the room and there's you watching just about got totaled by catters and look at this Whoa, that is brave racing from Rickle and Jake Mo. They quite have quite easily hit cutters. So this is on board with you watching. You can just see here. And if it wasn't probably for that wall on the left to stabilize you watching, he may have lost a bit more control. Now on board with recoil. Look at this in the that is a whisker away from a huge collision. Gutsy move gets himself a podium. And that will put recoil up in the placing. So you can see there, Jake Mo following in behind recoil managed to get four. So Cat is dropping back to fifth. A lot of drama at the end of that. Scavenger with a great placing of sixth. And also the APRT guys getting inside the top ten. Elsimo only just stayed in the top ten after that collision. Gundam finishing effectively last out of those that finished the race because of the mishap with the pit lane and there you can see the results now for the standings recalls jumped up Brettley's dropped down to fourth and lost a fair way off there but he's battling for third with Elsimo at the moment for the remaining two rounds Cat is also not far behind so a very close battle for third between P3 and P6 at the moment you can even include you watching in that if someone's to get a bit unlucky what an end to the race. We can't wait for the next round where we see the Radicals on the Bernese Alps. That is going to be absolutely action-packed electric racing. Very fast cars, big open circuit. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you at that round soon. Bye.